This should be a lesson to all the people that are watching. This was No Future's first project. And he got all these features just, just by DMing people. Yeah, man. Just yeah, like DM. A... Don't be afraid to just ask. I mean, everyone wants to make good music. So why won't you do it? Yeah, welcome to the vlog, to the vlog, welcome to the vlog, motherfucker, welcome to the vlog, to the vlog, hope you enjoy your stay. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the vlog. Today we have Dutch producer No Future. Together we talked about his first release and all the struggles that come along with releasing your first project. No Future is a 21 year old from Slanak in Netherlands who started playing instruments when he was just six years old. His first instrument being the flute. Now, fast forward about 15 years, he plays the piano, the guitar, the trumpet and the drums, most of which were self-taught. He started producing music when he was about 14 years old and well, he hasn't really stopped since. Together on this interview, we talked about a lot of dope things that a lot of you independent artists out there are gonna be able to relate to. So without further ado, let's get to the interview. Yo, what's up, man? How you going? Good, man, you? Yeah, man, good. Thank you, No Future, for being here with us today to be interviewed and ask some, uh, answer some questions. Um, so yeah, I, I like to jump straight into it with these with these interviews and stuff. So I'll, I'll get straight into the first question so that people can know a little bit more about you and especially your first uh, project. So speaking of your first project, on March 12th, you released your first EP titled Focus, uh, which I was yeah. lucky enough to be featured on as well. Um, can you can you maybe tell us, you know, being, being your first uh, project, can you tell us some of the struggles you faced with this first project? Yeah, man. So I call this focus. Well, it tells for everyone. It's like just getting my focus straight because I've been working for like two years on this, mm -hmm. maybe three. And I was always saying like, okay, now I'm going to release it. But in the end, it was not finished. I didn't have the motivation to finish it. So it kept going and going. And in the end, I came up with the name focus. Mm -hmm. because I finished it because I focused on it so I was like you know what I call this focus because I needed to get my focus straight to finish this thing mm -hmm. and it was my first uh, like EP album that I was releasing and I was so happy you can imagine it's like my first thing like I felt like I never accomplished something never finished something so I was like all right this is it this is called focus and this is going to be on Spotify yeah okay so i guess the, the main thing i guess you struggle with at first was motivation but then you managed to restart that and focus yourself yeah but also done. more things like uh like for example if i work with you you need to have time i need to have time you need to send me vocals you need to record i need to edit maybe i have something like i want to change this but you need to bring up the motivation to do it at the moment, not say I will do this tomorrow, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because so, like the EP, like besides besides myself, the EP had a lot of a lot of artists involved, um, a lot of other artists yeah. involved. So I imagined, you know, trying to coordinate with all of them would, would have taken up a lot of your time as well. Yeah. Yeah. It took a lot of time actually, because uh, they sent me vocals like, the most of the vocals I got were maybe one a year and a half before I released it. So mm -hmm. it was sitting a long time on my computer. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got your vocals, it was also maybe one year ago. Maybe yeah. Oh, man, dude, when you messaged me when mm -hmm. the, the song was coming out, I completely forgot, <laughs> I completely forgot that. Yeah, I man. Those yeah, man. I think, yeah, about, about one year that it'd been, yeah. So this was the, well, the idea behind my project, like just finishing things focusing on the things you really want to focus on mm -hmm. and for other people it can be other things and for me it was this album mm -hmm. yeah absolutely all right well that's that's a good you know you managed to find a way through it and everything um i'll move i'll move on to the second question i guess you know sort of relates to what we just talked about or the featured artists so as as i mentioned there were a lot of featured artists uh, on this ep how did you find everyone like how did you network and manage to find all those artists um, there are most of them are in different countries you're in netherlands but you know i'm I'm in Australia. I know Katana is in America, I'm pretty sure. So I'm not sure, you know, yeah. you would have had to work with multiple time zones and all that stuff as well. Yes, this was for this was pretty difficult sometimes because you were I was sleeping and suddenly I heard my phone and I was like, huh? <laughs> oh, 
it you messaging me and i was like yeah, it's yeah. Nice. oh indeed he's in australia yeah. but no like a few others i found to a friend of me mm-hmm. who lives close to me and he said like he also has this instagram page and he sent me like maybe you should try them mm-hmm. and well, the most artists just said to me yeah man send me some tracks so i sent them and then after a while i got focus back yeah like for example uh jago music mm-hmm. i just messaged him we talked a bit and then immediately i sent him tracks and after a while pretty fast actually he sent me the vocals which yeah, so you just good. messaged him on like instagram you made like you just dm yeah, him on instagram. Oh, yeah, 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 just, yeah and the same goes for honest evan stoneback also yeah Katana, also yeah, and, I mean, that's a, this should be a lesson to all the people that are watching. This was No Future's first project, and he got all these features just just by DMing people. Yeah, man, just yeah, like DM. A, yeah, yeah, it's really, like, a lot of people find it quite intimidating to get features from artists, especially, you know, when you don't really know them too well, um, and especially when you're not an established artist yourself. Um, but I think what most people need to understand is that, you know, most other underground artists, we're, we're pretty open to collaborating. And if, yeah. if you just ask, you know, there's absolutely no harm in doing that. More than likely, they're going to be down. Well, for example, they don't always reply. Like, I get sometimes. <laughs> That's that true. If you immediately get to the point of, like, yo, bro, let's collab. I'm also like, okay, I don't know you. Let's just first build a yeah. connection, you know, let's just vibe first, see if you fit the vibe. Mm-hmm. But in the end you always have a no and yes you can get so just ask i think and not do, don't be afraid to just ask i mean everyone wants to make good music so why won't you do it yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah and no, i think i think that's really 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 well said um oh by the way there's also to get collabs or like features, I also use Fiverr a lot. I don't know if you know this oh, platform. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fiverr. Pretty easy. I just uh, put a request, mm-hmm. like I'm searching for a pop, hip hop singer, rapper, female, male, vocalist on this track, mm-hmm. and then they can all reply, and I put their budget. It's okay. not for free, like on Instagram, but mm-hmm. they put their budget. It's not expensive. Like I think some others, I paid like thirty euros. Mm-hmm. Sure. For like, for like a full song of vocals sort of thing. Yeah, or just yeah. like uh, a hook. I'm um, yeah. like, if it's good, I'm willing to pay thirty euros. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's, I if like it's gonna it. if it's gonna make a banger, thirty euros. Yeah, is like... <laughs> it's worth it. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, you you're also helping out another you know underground artist. You know, you're it's it's that that's gonna come back around to you as well. That good karma. Yeah, man. Yeah yeah all right so we'll we'll move on to the next question so being you know this being your first project um moving on to the second one i don't know if you've got something planned already or not but uh, going into the future you know what do you think you'll do differently with the second project the second project uh definitely not planning a release before it's done okay because on the first project i was always saying okay before i had the songs done i was like this I will release on this date and this on that date. But you also have to think like I need to upload it to my distributor and it's need to be like one month before, maybe even more. Yeah. So in the end, it was like one week before and I was still not, it was still not finished, mm-hmm. you know? So I was just stressing myself a little bit with this. So now I'm just not putting any date for myself, I'm just finishing it. Mm-hmm. And then I look when I'm going to release it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, it's funny you say that because Matt, I I struggled with the exact same thing with my first project as well. I had, I basically had a calendar set out and I had all my singles picked out on where I wanted each one released and everything. And yeah, I absolutely didn't take into account, you know, the million and one factors that go into releasing a song and how much time you need in between. And you know, life happens sometimes. You know, you can't work on music and shit gets delayed or whatever but yeah i i think i think a lot of people will be able to relate to you there with, with their first project and just having i you know it's obviously good to have a deadline so you just you don't take forever on a project but yeah don't don't force a release date on yourself just focus yeah, on man. getting the song done and then and then worry about the release but it also helped me a little bit to put all these dates because i kept working on it mm-hmm. so in the end if I didn't put all those dates, I wouldn't be this far as I'm now. So maybe I didn't make the dates, but I pushed myself to finish it in the end. 
Not yeah. that I made it on time, but at least I was doing it. Yeah, you try. At least you tried to make it. Yeah. You know, not not and too late. Yeah, yeah. I also yeah, think yeah. when you make a list like this, it gives you motivation. You're like, okay, this is my goal. This is what I'm gonna do, and it motivates you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I like for me, for me personally, I feel like my like my goal setting has changed a little bit, and in, in terms of now, I'll set a goal of when I'll uh, finish a song rather than when I'll release it. You know, because then yeah. when I'm finished with it, then I can take you know. Because like every artist can relate to this. As soon as you finish a song, you want to release it the same second. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like you want to release it the second that it's mixed and mastered, and you get the final version from your engineer or whatever. Like you want to upload it straight away. Um, but unfortunately, that's that's just not the reality of it. And I guess coming to terms with that, and then just being a little bit more patient with your releases, really, really does pay. Off. It's a trip. I'm a blip on the map. It's so big.